Hi, my name's Warner Gibbs and I was working with Qantas since 1959 until I retired in 1990. So then I get promoted and I was due for a promotion and then they said, oh, you've got to do an exam. And I sat down and did the exam and never heard anything. So a basing come up in London, two year basing in London. So I said, to, I went in and I applied for it and they said, you're the most senior senior we've got at this stage. So yes, you can go if you want to go. And I said, yep. And the whole family go for two years, Dan and the two, I had two little girls at that stage. And so we off we go to London for two years. That was marvellous. We just flew London, New York, off London, London, Bermuda, when the service used to come up through Bermuda, one a week. So we'd fly down to Bermuda, a Mexico base would bring it up to Bermuda. Then we'd have six, seven days, and then we would fly back to London. Or we'd go across to New York, and have three days and then fly back to London. So then we came back and they said, oh, Warner, yes, congratulations. And I said, what have I done? They said, you're going on the first crew on the 747. I said, oh, really? I said, I've only been home two months. I said, I've got to get things organised. They said, doesn't matter, you're going on the 747. And I said, or how did I get picked? And they said, because we want you on that aircraft, along with all the other crew that was picked, especially picked to go on it. There were two seniors, there was myself and a chap called Alf Johnson, and they flew us up to Seattle. We got into Seattle in the afternoon, and the next morning at five o'clock the phone rang. And we said, oh, I didn't put a call in. They said, no, Qantas have rang. They want you to go, get ready. They're taking you out to the Boeing factory and you're going on a training flight to San Francisco, which was only about an hour and a bit from Seattle. So we said, oh, okay. So out we go. And so we could then look at the aircraft because in the back cabin of where I was going to be working, the galley was in the hold. So, and we had a card elevator and a personnel elevator. So you would then go down and whoever was working down in there would, I think there were 10 ovens all up, which took 28 meals each. So we had plenty of time from the time you run the first lot of food to the second lot. So we enjoyed that. When we came back, they said, now you're going into the training school to do emergency procedures. Now, we did emergency procedures in a mock-up in Sydney. And when we come to do the, uh, using the slides, we would, they had a mock-up of the upper deck. And they said, we are now going to open up the upper deck slide. So we opened it up and down it goes and we look at it. And they said, it's 42 feet from the ground to this upper deck. Now we want a volunteer to go down the slide. So not one of us said, oh, I'll do it. And they said to me, right, Warner, you're the senior senior, down you go. Well, they had one of the instructors halfway down the slide looking at, and he said, if you could have seen your face, I said, if you could have felt the way I felt going there, and you really go fast. But down at the bottom of the slide, they had a brake pad, which was about foot 18 inches wide, which stopped you almost in your tracks and you would come up on your feet and you could walk away. And that's what they wanted. Unfortunately for the girls who had nylon underwear on, it burnt them. It, it, it actually stuck to their bodies and they had to said no more nylon stuff. So that was my first effort at going down the slide, my last fortunately. The day came, we had five days in Seattle and then the day came that we were now going to fly out and they picked the crews, split them up, and they said, well, Warner, you're the eldest, so you can do the first leg. We'll fly the aircraft from the Boeing factory to Seattle to pick up passengers, go to San Francisco, pick up the balance, and then down to Honolulu. 
Right, so we get to Seattle and uh, we pick our passengers and we fly to San Francisco where we picked up the balance and we had 200, I think it was 87 was the exact figure of passengers that we had for the mail service. And uh, so we're boarding the passengers in Seattle to go to San Francisco and one of the crew members come up and said to me, we have a problem in the cabin, you better come down. And there was a chap called Jack Wattell who was a very solid man. He was a weightlifter and reserved for the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne. And I said, what's up, Jack? And he said, no, there's no problem. Or he said, I was putting this lady's bag up and she's complaining about not having a window seat. And I said, well, what's the problem, madam? She said, well, when I booked, they said I could have a window seat. And this man says to me, Madam, you should sit here because from where you're sitting, you can see all the windows. And I said, unfortunately, I couldn't keep a straight face. So I had to go back to the galley. And that was our first problem in the 747. And then we did a meal service out of San Francisco down to Honolulu. And that went smoothly. Considering it was our first flight, we had a our man in charge of cabin crew, which is a guy called Dennis Liston, and a chap from the Boeing field to see how it was all going. And uh, when it was all over, he said uh, to uh, Dennis, he said, gee, that went well, considering you guys have never been on this aircraft before. And I said, well, it was the training I guess we got beforehand. So then we got off in um, Honolulu and we had a night, and then we took the next aircraft back.